Last week in the Q&A section of this newsletter, I answered a question about gapless playback. Hi, this is Jim Todd with Song Surgeon, and this week we're going to continue this discussion about gapless playback. And I'd like to start by giving you a definition of what gapless playback is. This is from Wiki. Gapless playback is the uninterrupted playback of consecutive audio tracks so that there is no pause in between the end of one audio file track and the beginning of the next. Gapless playback is common with compact discs, gramophone records, or tapes, but it is not always available with other formats that employ compressed digital audio. So with that as a backdrop, let me explain the situation that I encountered in the Q&A last week, and that is that I had a person who sent me these files that you can see here, uh, tracks 1 through 11, and these were files that he had burned to a CD using iTunes, and iTunes has a setting in it that you can have it uh, burn tracks in such a way that they're supposed to be gapless playback. But when he played these back, there was still a gap between the tracks, and that was causing him a problem. And his question to me simply was, can Song Surgeon do something to fix or solve this? And I really didn't know the answer, but I played around with this a little bit and sent him some of these files back after I had edited them, and indeed we were able to solve the problem. So today let me show you uh, what I did to solve this problem and how if you have gapless playback problems, you can perhaps do the same thing to solve your problem. The first thing I did was simply open a couple of these tracks and copy and paste them together and then I sent them off to him to see if he could hear whether or not there was a gap between the playback because I wasn't familiar with the song so I couldn't tell definitively. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take track one, drag it out here and open it up and then I'm going to open a second instance. There it is and we're going to take track two. We're going to drag it and drop it onto that. Now we have track one and two open and then what I did is I copied all of track two. Remember uh, we've got two instances open so we need to keep straight in our minds which is which but I copied all of track two so there we go and I'm just going to do a keyboard shortcut control C and then I went to track one which was here and I went to the very end of it to insert this and actually to make certain that we're at the very end of it, I'm going to zoom in, or excuse me, zoom out even further so I can see the end of it. So at this point we are at the very end of track two. What I'm going to do here is to insert a marker so we can find this place as we go through this procedure. So we have the progress indicator at the end. We're going to edit, paste, we're going to copy this at the current position or at the end. And I'm going to select end because just in case we haven't been able to move the progress indicator to the end, this will definitely make sure that we're at the end. So we're going to do that. Click paste and it now is pasted in track two. And so then let's go back to track two and let's open our window of files again. Let's now go to track three, drag it. Do we want to save the changes we have open? No, we want to open track three. There we are, track three is open. Let's zoom out so we can see the whole song. Now let's drag and copy the entire track, which I've done. Control C for a keyboard shortcut. Go back to the original instance where we have track one plus now track two copied into it or pasted into it. Let's go up here to edit, paste, and again let's paste this at the end. So we're going to paste track three now at the end. Okay, but before we do that, I forgot I want to put a second marker here at the end. So let's drag this to the end, at least as we know it to be, put a second marker. Now let's go to edit, paste, put it at the end, and now we've pasted it at the end. I'm going to zoom back out, and so you can see this area here was track one, this area here was track two, and this area here was track three. So this is what I did the first time. I put this together, and then I exported it to create a single file of these three tracks, and I sent it to him. 
And I asked him, I said, is this sufficient? Does it play back with no gap? And he wrote me back and said, no, there's still a gap. So then I started looking at these copy and paste points where we have these markers set up. Let's go to one of these here. And then let's zoom in to say five seconds. Okay, so let's reposition this so we can get a little more accuracy here. So here was our insertion point about right there. And it looks like there's a little bit of space, but we're still at a five second zoom. Let's zoom into one second. And as we zoom into one second, if you look a little more closely here, you could see that there's a tiny bit of space where the amplitude of the waveform goes to zero. So what I did is I highlighted or selected this space, and we need to select it in both tracks because this is a stereo track, and then I simply deleted it. So we can go up here to Edit, Delete, and I removed that space. And then, let's zoom back out a second. Let's go over here to this insertion point between two and three. Let's zoom back in. Again, let's grab this and center it on our screen. Let's center our progress indicator over where this paste point was. And now let's zoom in again to one second. I'm going to recenter it one more time. And here again, you can see the amplitude of the file that ends and the amplitude of the file or the next track where it begins. And you can see that we have a space here. So again, what I simply did is I highlighted this space. And then I deleted it. And once I had done that, I exported this file a second time, entire song, and sent it back to him. And I said, now listen to it again and tell me if you can hear a gap between the tracks. And he sent me an email back and said, no, that's perfect. It's doing what it should now. So with these three tracks, hopefully I've demonstrated how you could take all of these tracks, all 11 of these tracks, and open them in a second instance, paste them back into this first instance, one after the other, and then go to the paste point and delete the space between them. And when you've finally completed doing this with all 11 tracks, then you export the entire song and you'll create a single audio file with all 11 of these tracks in it. And then that file can be burned to a CD and it will play as a single file and there will be no gaps between these tracks because these tracks really no longer exist as individual tracks. They will all be in one large track and any space between them we've deleted or removed. So that is how you can use Song Surgeon to solve some of these gapless playback problems. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to send me an email and we can uh, address them next week, but hopefully that's helpful to you, especially if you're dealing with these types of gapless playback problems. Thanks for watching.